Hi everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we're going back to our stash series and we are going to take a look at these jelly gouache paints for a second time. Now as we established in the first video, the Artex and the Hemi paints are the same paints, just rebranded. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to compare them, and I mean them as in collectively, to the Marie's paints, which were the budget paints. So I've already had a look in the case and these are still absolutely wet. There's, they've not dried out at all and it has been over a week since the last video. There will be some items going up on the stash shop on the Colour Cave website probably later today if you're watching this video when it comes out or possibly into tomorrow and within that collection of things in the shop is going to be a set of the jelly gouache. Now what I have done is I've had an accident with this case and the uh, the plastic clip at the backs actually split. Um, I got it caught when I was opening it and it started to pull away. So what I've done is I've transferred the Hemi paints, which were the ones that we opened into this damaged case. And the Hemi box, which is the yellow one, will have the sealed jelly gouache, which has the Artex label on them inside, just for ease of shipping. So if that's something you're interested in, head over to the cave website and you can see what other goodies are there. Oh my goodness, there's a jock here. So we're going to be comparing these in an actual painting. And this is the thing. And if you've watched any of my comparison videos before, you will know that the proof really is in the, the finished piece. It's all very well tested them out in bits of paper, but the differences really start to show up when you actually start creating an artwork with them. So I haven't looked at the Marie's paints and I'm really curious to see whether these are dry or not because this lid wasn't sticking down properly. Now they were quite jelly-esque to start with and I, I can see already the two that we opened if you remember as well. If you haven't seen the first video I'll link it down in the description at the end card. Um, they were quite jelly-esque anyway and that looks to me like it's dried out even more. You can see it's cracked right down the middle there. And the other one was this uh, sort of golden yellow colour. It is still it's still coming off in my finger, so it is still wet, but it's, um, yeah, it's definitely dried out a bit more. So I'm going to have to take all the cellophane off these ones. So obviously I'm not going to do that in camera because that is boring and we want to get into some actual artwork today. So I'll get this sorted and then we can get cracked on with an actual artwork. Okay, opening those was a substantial effort and I am absolutely covered. I've sprayed paint all up my arm and everything. I hate these paints already. Like I just, jelly gouache is messy. I thought it would be cleaner. It's not. So I'm going to go and wash my hands before I do anything else. Okay, so similar to what we've done in the past, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw something and then I'm going to paint it half with the Marie's paints and half with the Artex Stroke Hemi paints so that we can actually see a direct comparison side by side. Now what I thought I would do is I would draw a couple of elements today and then when I've decided which set I prefer, for the third video, I will do a full finished piece using the elements that we're playing about with today. So I've got some generic watercolour paper here. This is watercolour paper that has come in various subscription boxes. I've no idea what brand it is, but you can guarantee that most of it's good quality. So I'm going to stick with that just for what we're doing. And I'm just going to do a quick sketch here of the things. There's an HB pencil, perfect. So I'm just going to lay out a couple of quick sketches in pencil. Obviously there will not be any detail in them because we want the paint to do the work, but it's nice to have some sort of guideline. So seeing as we're getting into the festive season now, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to try. Now obviously doing things like this, ideally you want symmetrical things so that you can see an exact comparison side by side. So the first thing I wanted to do was like a, like a bow, you know, like a ribbon and because uh, that's a nice uh, symmetrical object because I, I'm actually really hopeful that these Marie's paints are going to be a, you know a contender based on the price of them I know they are a slightly different consistency but I think that there's potential there for for I was going to say for greatness maybe maybe that's a bit too strong a phrase okay so we've got a little bow there the other thing I thought about was Christmas baubles so let's just draw ourselves a little traditional shiny glass bauble. 
So uh, no judgments on the drawing skills here, please, because that's not what we're here for. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I wanted to try as well, this is a bit of a running joke in my family. My my grandmother, the bless her little heart, she absolutely hates seeing Robin Red's breasts on Christmas cards and at Christmas time because she says, why are they so special at Christmas? Because they are alive the entire year round. So she's got a bit of a thing about that. So I thought we could draw Robin Red breasts and I'll show her the video and just wind her up a little bit. I mean, they're, they're not that complicated really, but it's, uh, yeah, proportions and things with birds I seem to kind of like struggle with for some reason so there's going to be a little bit of like pokey outy wing here but not a lot the odd time that i have drawn birds i seem to prefer them of the like um the like the portly variety <laughs> i don't know why it's just something that i seem to like maybe i should practice drawing birds a little bit more okay Okay, so we've got three things here we can test out maybe we should do some foliage as well because leaves are always Leaves are always quite good for that, and we can test out some greens there as well. So we'll just have a sort of generic, a generic leaf form here. Okay, here's a sea white synthetic. Yeah, that's that's reasonably stiff. Right, we'll have a go with some of that. I think what we'll do is we'll start by trying to mix some of these colours. They are very oh, I've just stick my finger in it already. See what I mean? I don't like jelly gouache. It's rubbish. <laughs> It's not rubbish, it's just the fact that I'm terribly clumsy with stuff like this. Right, okay, anyway, enough nonsense. Come on, Jen. So we have to decide on some colours here. So I was thinking pinky purple from a bauble. And obviously we're going to be using some red and browns in our little birdie. And then green on the leaves. So we might go for some blues over here. I'm going to use a separate brush to mix. It's something that I always do. I've got some of these little... Uh, sort of funny angled brushes. They came in with gelatos from Faber-Castell and I've been using the same one for ages and it's pretty bulletproof. So we'll have a little go with that. So I'm going to grab some white. So let's just see what happens if we... Now that's mixing fairly well and all I've got there is a damp brush. I haven't added any water to this. So even though it is really firm in the pan, it seems to be spreading out and it's mixing very well. It's cooperating. It actually feels quite watery. That's weird. Now, that's really interesting. This is a dry brush. It's a dry brush. That tiny bit of water is really affecting the opacity of, of the paint here, which is really interesting. Now, the thing with gouache that I keep forgetting about is you have to wait until it dries to see what colour it is actually going to be. So that's uh, also quite interesting, but I'm just going to cover this whole area. I kind of feel like straight away painting with this onto this paper, that it's behaving halfway between watercolour. I mean, look at those strokes. It's behaving halfway between watercolour and actual gouache. That's, that's the way I feel about it. And the thing as well is this little brush that I'm using to mix with, they're not particularly absorbent and they're, they're not meant to be. They're not meant to be watercolour brushes. They're craft brushes. So that, that concerns me a wee bit. That was way too much paint. I think I'm being a bit over overzealous here. Okay, so again, my brush is quite dry. So this is neat. I'm just going to manipulate it on the palette a little bit to, to sort of bash down that that jelly consistency. And in its neat form, it's it behaves much more like gouache wood. Uh, yeah, that it's, it's seems to be just the tiniest bit of water is causing it an issue. Here we go. And that looks as if it's gonna dry to quite a nice flat color as well. I'm, I'm reasonably impressed with that. And my water is now a, a, a beautiful shade of lilac. <laughs> and it is drying really, really quickly. I can't say the same for my bow here. That's still, that's still damp. Okay, so I, I'm not really, I mentioned this in the, uh, in the original video. I'm not that enamoured with the selection of greens that we've got in the Marie set. And it is literally these three here. So... We've got like a, a dark forest green here, but not what I would call it, like a true green or a um, like a secondary colour green. These are all like tertiary colours. So I want to try and just mix my own and see what happens. So again, I'm going to use this blue that we had and I'm going to grab some of this yellow, which looks very, very gelatinous. 
there's a good word for this time of the afternoon. So a little bit of mixing and this feels really watery again and again that was me just dipping my brush in between and I'm actually wiping it off on a rag before uh, you know to get the excess moisture off it before I, I dip it into anything else and it's just making the paint really watery. So this seems to be quite sensitive to moisture and it, it just seems to suck it up like a sponge so that's something to be aware of. I'm going back up to my bobble here. I can see some spots where I've missed, but that neat paint is the color is really, really flat and there's really good coverage. So I think we're going to have to try and keep the water to an absolute bare minimum. Yeah, it just, it seems to be much happier going on to the paper in its neat form. It doesn't seem all that enamored with having water near it, which is a wee bit disappointing. Um, I dare say if you were going for that wash that we had that we looked at in the first video then this paint might actually be better. Now we do have some really nice warm browns up the top here so that's going to be quite handy. Now Robin red breasts aren't really red they're more like orange so I'm going to start oh my goodness I was going to start with a bit of this and I'm just taking it straight out the pan onto my brush again because that seems to th that seems to work better. Now, the whole point of this is we are going to test the uh, let's build things up in layers and see what happens kind of idea. So by starting with this yellowy colour, we can, you know, we can certainly go from there. Not entirely convinced about the quality of my drawing here, but it's not really what we're, what we're here for. So I'll let it slide just this once. Now, because this is so dry, it's really not wanting to cooperate going down on the the paper, like I feel as if I'm kind of like almost dry brushing, but yeah, if I add water to it, then I don't feel like that's going to go so well. But yeah, there seems to be low, it's as, almost as if it's getting stuck in my brush, because there's, when I dip it in the water, it just all like sort of goes whoosh and comes off. Doesn't make that noise though. <laughs> okay, so what about a little bit of grey for his underbelly? I do like my gouache to be all on the firmer side, but I'm finding this a bit of a chore to to work with. Okay, pop his eye in. So I'm going to try again. I'm just dipping the tip of my brush into that and no more. The conclusion that I'm drawing from this is these paints at best are not consistent across the across the board, you know, across the different colors. So I'm going to try this neat blue as well. Yeah, so the neat paint the neat paint behaves really well, like it, it does. There there just seems to be, please excuse the pun, but there's no happy medium. Uh it's either you're all in or you're into this horrendous watery mess. And I can't even get that to blend out now either, like it just it won't it won't blend. Okay, let's go back to our bobble here. So before this dries out as well, again, and mix some of this in. Oh, lordy. So putting that over the top, it is significantly lighter. And as it stands, it doesn't look as if it's going on any lighter. Yeah, it just seems to be sticking to the brush. I'm going to try another brush just in case it's the brush. Uh, I'm going to try my trusty Milan. It wants to hold on to the brush. It doesn't want to really doesn't want to go into the paper if it can help it. It's like, now nah, I'll just stay here, thanks, I'm good. Right, I'm just grabbing some clean water. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my pipette out. You know, things are serious and I'm getting my pipette out. Now, obviously, this is clean water. I just want to see how well this is going to reconstitute as well. Oh, my goodness. Right, okay. I'm going to try and pick up. I should really be using my other brush for this. I'm going to end up ruining my brush. So because I've put water in this, it's just done absolutely zero. We'll wait and see how it dries, but... Right, I'll go back over to my little Robin friend here. I'll just grab some neat orange. I'll just put a tiny speck of water on the end there. It's almost as if the paint's like hungry for water. The one advantage of this being really dry is you can create a nice sort of fuzzy edge, you know, get a bit of um, of that sort of feathery effect in. So my only conclusion that I'm kind of drawing here is it's either 
you're either on or off with these gouache paints. I think for somebody that's maybe come from watercolour and is, you know, trying to sort of make that step, I would say that these are probably uh, that sort of interim type step, maybe. And even the likes of, like, if I wanted to kind of, like, blend this in together, I don't really know how I'm going to, you know, can I, like, there we go, there's some of that neat, kind of like golden yellow over the top. Okay, so we can we can blend a wee bit. I feel as if like the colours are muddy and really quickly as well. That looks pretty dirty if I'm honest. Right, um the the thing that's going the worst here is probably this. In fact everything's going really badly apart from the robin, isn't it? Yeah, let's be realistic. Okay, I want to try with the white now for a, a highlight. But if I was to start adding in, like, let's grab some of this magenta colour and like really, ooh. Like the opacity isn't the best. And you can see there, if you just look up at the top of my bobble, this has gone really sort of dirty looking as well. Really sort of muddy, which is slightly disappointing. I feel like with these pans, if they weren't, if the pots weren't so full, I would fully be mixing some water in and, you know, letting it kind of like rumble about a wee bit and just sort of reconstitute itself and try and get it to the consistency of the Hemi paints. I think that that would probably be uh, my, my preferred method with these, but they're actually too full to do it with. Uh, I might be able to pipette a couple of drops in and just kind of like tickle it on the surface to try and get the top layer to soften down a bit. Uh, so let's try it with, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Oh, I'll bring these down. I'm maybe going to try it with the blues because I want to do a little bit more work on that bow. See, that looks really wet in that corner though. But see, now I'm concerned that that is going to just water the paint down. Because it looks really wet, like it looks like there's loads of liquid in there, unless it's just like separated. I don't think I'm going to be able to rescue my bow. And up in this top part here, I just want to put like a single, like steady line of black and then grab some of that blue and mix it in a little bit. The colours don't want to, they don't really want to blend together on the paper very much either. They're just not, they're just not having any of it really. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to abandon ship with the, the bow. I'm, I'm kind of frustrated with it. Uh, yeah, down to this leaf here, let's try out this kind of like forest green colour. I just feel like I can't, I can't do much with it. That's, that's how I feel about it. I think I've had enough of the Marie's paints. I think I've had enough. So I'm going to switch over and uh, I'll do a quick water change as well and I'll clean my palette off. And we'll come back and we'll try with the other half of these items and just see what happens. There is a, a substantial difference the lines are much smoother. It doesn't feel dry under the brush. It's not, I'm not fighting with it, whereas I just felt with the Marie's paints there, I was just fighting it every step of the way. So I'm just going to carry on. And I still haven't dipped my brush back in the paint yet either. So a little of this is going a long way. I've got much more precision as well. It's just behaving itself better. Where with the, the Marie's paints, the, the paint was clinging to the brush and it wasn't wanting to come off the brush onto the paper. Although the paint was clumping onto the brush, you know, these Hemi paints were doing the same thing. It wanted to come off. It, it was desperate to get on the paper and fulfill its destiny. And that's what paint should do in my book. Doesn't matter what type of paint it is. So again, I'm just going straight in here. I'm not, you know, I want it to be a fair comparison. And that's inclusive of using them when they're slightly dried out just to see what happens. This is such a lovely colour of purple. I'm pretty sure I had a bit of a, of a rant and a rave over this in the, the original video. I just think it's such a nice shade of purple. And it's not a colour I generally get you know, like overly excited about, but this is just gorgeous. Silky smooth onto the paper. And you know, this is watercolour paper. It's quite textured previous effort. Now I do have to say though, you've got to remember that the Marie's paints are they're half the price of these. So, you know, even taking that into consideration, yes, you get what you pay for, but 
you're still getting a hell amount of pigment from the Marie's paints, especially our little birdie here. Uh, you know, you're still you're still getting a good deal, but they're just they seem to be just that little bit more awkward. And for a medium that I suspect I wouldn't use all that much, I would be inclined to spend the extra money. You know, if I, if I was starting from the beginning, so if I was in your guy's shoes and sitting watching this thinking to myself, do I want to try this? Uh, I would spend the extra money. If gouache is something you haven't used at all and you're not even entirely sure if you like it as a type of paint, I would suggest um, the Marie's paints because you're not wasting a huge amount of money if you decide it's something you don't like. Now, I'm not really having to mix a green. I've got a better selection of greens here and I've got this lovely shade here. Ooh. So again, I just want to get that base layer down and I'm loving how vibrant the Hemi paints are. Like, I really am. It just feels much softer and silkier going down, a bit glossier. I'm a very tactile person and I do notice things like that. And I, I like to touch things and you've probably noticed it in most of my videos. Um, I like to like stroke paper and, uh, you know, like feel the tips of the paint brushes and, you know, I like the weight of a, of a good pencil in my hand. Um, I am a very tactile person and the way that the paint feels going down under my hand onto the paper is something that's really, really important to me because it's one of the aspects of art that makes me enjoy it. Apart from making pretty pictures every now and then, obviously that makes me happy. But that this is like a really big part of it for me and I know there's other people that don't have that same feeling and it doesn't bother them. But I just always feel as if it's worth mentioning. I've got way too much paint on my brush there as well. Just steady on, getting a bit carried away with myself there. I'm going round the eye this time because I need to get the make sure I get the, the contour right. Yeah, this just seems to mix easier as well. I just get the feeling that this is happier paint, like it's happy to be paint, you know. Whereas I felt the other stuff maybe grudges the fact that it's paint and doesn't, you know, maybe it wanted to be a pencil. Oh, that's really dark. Wow, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to be that dark. Okay, that might not be what I'm after at all. Yeah, now that's blending out a lot better than the other stuff as well. See just this line down here that I thought was really dark initially and I'm able to spread that about. That's amazing. That's kind of what I was hoping that the other stuff was going to do. It is drying quite quickly as well. Uh, you know, similarly to the, to the other stuff. So that's just something to note. Even doing his little feet here, this is just, it's easier with this paint. It is much, much, much easier. So this is a real test because this is now a very tiny area. And I have 100% control over where this paint is going. This yellow looks a little bit suspect, but it's okay. I think these could all probably do with a really good mix, if I'm honest. And um, had I had more experience with these, I would have done that before we started this video. But it's too late now. But it's quite interesting to see them like this anyway. And um, before we uh, before we start the the next, you know, the the final artwork, I'll give them all a really good mix with a palette knife. Yeah, the control aspect is definitely better, and I'm assuming that's just the to do with the the lay down. You know, the fact that the paint's a bit more predictable and the fact that it wants to, to stick to the paper. Okay, I'll leave that to dry now as well. I hope that in that bow alone, even what I've done so far and I'm not finished with it, that you can see the difference between the paints. Look how flat and matte that blue is. That's just lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. Right, let's see how's my bobble doing. And I've put a fair amount of water on my brush there. And it's just, just doing its thing. So now if I grab some of the original purple and I can just like blend that in and work it in and it just wants to do it. It's like, oh, hey, you want to do this? Okay, let's do it. Other paint, no chance. No way, no how, no can do. See, this is going to look a bit odd, but I'm just going to put a little bit of white for a highlight here. Uh... Again, just to test the, the, the opacity of the white. So we'll just, uh, we can just assume that there's multiple light sources. Now again, I have a damp brush here. This is not 
a dry brush. Look at the difference! Look at the difference! I'm really curious to use this lighter green just because it looks pretty and I like green. This is really dry though on the top. Again, if I just kind of have a poke about, it seems to be it seems to be a bit wetter underneath. Again, bit of a damp brush here. And I can just like smooth out that edge and it's not like gimping out on me, which is really good. Might get a bit overexcited with myself here and just mix in some white still while it's still. Yeah, that's that's working fairly well. So I'm actually able to mix it on the paper. Okay, we'll let that dry off now. Over to our, I was going to say over to our bunny rabbit. I, I, honestly, I haven't been drinking or smoking anything. Because <laughs> it looks totally like a bunny rabbit. <laughs> yeah, okay, so let's grab some reds here. So we've got this kind of vermilion shade. Now this is actually very thick. And I'm kind of wanting to like maybe water this down a little bit. The more I use and the, the drier my brush gets, the more we should be able to to do something with it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh no, that didn't go on the plan. Okay, this that this feels almost identical to mixing the uh the Marie's paint when I was doing the grey. Because the opacity is much better as well, I feel like I want to use the grey over the top of the this colour on the legs, this kind of like putty colour. So the last thing I want to do on him here is to give him a little bit of his darker brown. Get some texture in him. Oh, He looks kind of mean and cheesed off, doesn't he? <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, right, okay, back to my bauble. And I, again, I'll just want to do this for fun, if I'm perfectly honest. I want to take this indigo because it is really dark. Oh, it's such a nice colour. It's like a really dark phthalo, actually, or Prussian blue. I don't think it's actually indigo. Oh, I just put a tiny little smudge of that around there just because I can. Oh. You want to be able to have the precision to use this for like highlights and lowlights. I'll probably need to zoom in a little bit for this. Uh, and I just felt on the other side as if I was just like, <laughs> you're like splodging it down on the paper. But I feel as if I've maybe got a bit more of a a chance here on this this here side uh, to, you know, really, really put the paint where I want it. That's the color of my kitchen walls. <laughs> I've made teal right here. <laughs> Is actually the colour of my kitchen walls, which um, I like. I'm dreaming about teal paint in my sleep now. Do you know what's popping into my head? See, just as I'm sitting here doing this, I ca see the the Marie's paints. I'm kind of looking at them as the Crayola pencils. Uh, you know, they're like the Crayolas of the jelly gouache world. There's nothing wrong with them, but you're gonna have to work hard to get to get what you want out of them. That's that's kind of like that's kind of like my comparison, I think. Like they'll they'll do you a job, but you you're gonna have to put your back into it a wee bit if you want something, you know, if you want to create something reasonably spectacular, which is fine. That's absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that. But just I think it's something that people need to be aware of. I'm going to call it done here, guys, because I think I've kind of explored all I want to explore with this today. Uh, yeah, so that was that was eye-opening. What I have learned from this is that mixing these paints up with a palette knife, whether they look completely wet or not, is the way forward because it will help with the consistency when you're picking it up on the brush. I've also learned that the Marie's paints are... Uh, a little less cooperative. They're not as nice to work with, but you still get reasonably good, reasonably good pigment from them. The lay down isn't so great. Uh, I think it's quite apparent though, just in the little simple paintings that I've done here, and I think it stands out most with this bow and the robin. Um, you know, what can I say? But it's back to the same old thing. I think with this you get what you pay for. Am I a fan of jelly gouache? Truthfully, not really. I think I would rather stick to my tubes of gouache. I don't like how messy they are. And this sort of faffing about with the, the pans and things. And yeah, I don't know if I could be bothered with that all the time. But 
if you get a set with a good range of colours like this and you, you don't really want to mix colours or aren't that interested in it, then I would definitely say it's worthwhile giving these a go. So, uh, yeah, anyway, go and check out the Colour Cave website if you want to get your hands on the other one of these palettes. It will be up there. I think, I don't know if anybody will be interested, but I think I'll be putting the Marie's paints there as well. Obviously, I will make sure they're tightly wrapped for postage. So if gouache is something that you've never had a go of and you fancy it, it might be worth worthwhile picking up the Marie's paints just because they're cheap. I don't know, up to you guys. And uh, yeah, so for the last video in this particular stash series, I will do a full proper painting and I will be using the Hemi paints for that purpose. So I would love to hear your thoughts, guys. And I, once again, I want to thank you for your knowledge and your input under the last video because that was really helpful information for me. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate the support. I hope you've enjoyed this today and I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. Have a good day everyone and bye for now.